We are just two days before the new year, before Rosh Hashanah, and everything that happens in space and in time is found originally in the Torah. And the question is, what exactly is the message for this particular year, which is unique from other years? And the first thing that comes to mind is that this is the beginning of the new seven-year cycle. In Israel, in the time of the Temple, we had a seven-year cycle called Shemitah, and every seven years there was a Shemitah year, a year in which the land was left fallow. It was sort of a yearly sabbatical, and now we're concluding the sabbatical, and starting with Rosh Hashanah, we begin the new seven-year cycle. The beginning of the first of the seven years was crowned with a special commandment, which is called Hakel, the time we were supposed to gather all of Israel to one place, to the central place, which is the place of the base Hamigdash. And the king was supposed to read the Torah in front of all of Israel during the holiday of Sukkot. And this was something that was done in, with great fanfare, and all of Israel participated. And even though very few, in terms of percentages, of the people could actually hear, but the very fact that they were there together gathered with one heart and one voice to acknowledge and accept the supreme mastery of God himself over ourselves and the whole world, that had the effect of elevating all of the people and uniting them. So the first thing is that this is a Rosh Hashanah of the year of Hakhel, and this is the theme of Rosh Hashanah, that we cannot just be by ourselves but we have to be with everyone else. We must be concerned about everyone else. The next thing is that Rosh Hashanah comes out on the third day of the week. On the third day of the week, when you look at the Teva and the creation of the six days of creation, the third day of the week was the day in which God said Tov Ma'od twice. Tov twice. When God said good, and God saw that it was good twice. And the idea behind it is that on the second day, the work was incomplete. On the third day, God not only did the third day's work, but also completed the work that began on the second day. Huchpal bo kitov, the word kitov was doubled on this third day of the week. And so automatically, this is a Rosh Hashanah where there's double good. And the concept of double good is good for heaven and good for creatures. That we have to be not only concerned about our relationship with God, but our relationship with another person. And that fits in with the theme of the year of Hakel. Another facet that's interesting about this particular year is that it is an odd-numbered year. And it is an odd-numbered year that is divisible by three. 5769, which is the number of years from the time of creation, is divided into 1,923 threes. Because it is on the third day of the week, it is significant that this year can be divided into three. The number 1923 is a prime number. It is not divided by anything else. And it is also composed of um, three out of the four numbers are odd numbers. 
The idea behind an odd number is that it represents individuality. And yet, because it is a number, 57, 16, it's a number that's divisible by 3, which is also, it's also primarily a, an odd number. But because it's divisible by 3, it has the concept of number 3. What is the concept of number 3? The concept of number 3 is the ability to unify opposites. Well, you see, the first day creates light. The second day creates divisions. And the third day brings the divisions together and brings light into the divisions. And that's the reason why it's twice tov, it's twice good. Because it deals with divisions, it deals with diversity, individuality, and yet brings individuality together to become one with the rest of us. The idea behind that is as follows, that the Torah portion that we read talks about the unity of all of Israel, at the same time talks about their uniqueness. Each individual has a unique contribution and a unique role in Klal Yisrael. And only when we are individuals, and only when we are giving our unique blessing and our unique efforts, only then can we have a whole nation. If everybody did the exact same thing, we didn't have a nation. We'd have clones. But when we all do our thing together, we be, become individuals who are one unit. A unit composed of individuals is a very strong unit, much stronger than if everyone was exactly the same. And so, the message for this year's Rosh Hashanah is that we have to be individuals. That means we have to become self-reliant, self-starters. We have to not wait until somebody else tells us what to do, or somebody else inspires us. We must be self-inspired and self-fulfilling and self-actualizing. Even while we're concerned about the other person and we reach out to the other person who may not be as successful as we are. And so, this year's theme, the theme of Hakel, of gathering, gathering all of Israel, while at the same time expressing one's individuality and unifying the individual with the public. It's the most profound idea. And it comes out in Rosh Hashanah, which comes out on the third day of the week, which represents this idea of individuality while being unified. And so, we should be successful in our own individual endeavors, while at the same time being concerned and being unified with the public with all of Israel, with all of the world, and bringing this world to its ultimate climax, where each individual will realize his or her goal, even while they're all unified with the soul of the Messiah. May he come.